was uh, it was an election day. It was a primary election day that day. And we had a very contentious, I was a commanding officer of the 3-4 precinct in Washington Heights. And it was going to be a very contentious election. I was supposed to be in originally at 7 a.m. to do the duty for Manhattan. But uh, the day before it got changed because they wanted me to work late because they knew at the end of the election it was going to be uh, contentious. So on September 11th, I slept a little later, took my, uh, my kids down to the bus. And as I'm out at the bus, I'm listening to the radio. And all of a sudden it says a plane hits the World Trade Center. The original thought was that, ah, you know, a single propeller plane off target ended up hitting the thing. I didn't really think too much about it. Kids went on the bus. I went back uh, to my house. Maybe 20 minutes later, I get a page, because that was back in the day of pages, not cell phones, to call in. And that's when they told me that, you know, there'd been an attack. Uh, uh, your large plane had hit the Trade Center. So obviously I get dressed really quick. I jump in the car and I'm flying down. And it was surreal as I got down the end of the Palisades Parkway to get to the George Washington Bridge. There was one Jersey Trooper car there. Uh, I told him who I was and I was going in. He lets me go through. And I'm crossing the George Washington Bridge by myself. I'm the only car on the bridge at that point in time. And you just look south and you see the smoke billowing up uh, from the buildings. I get in, get changed really quick. I call in, they tell me to stay up uh, in the Washington Heights area. A lot of people had already gone down there and they wanted to have some people covering up in Manhattan. And as the day progressed and, and the towers fell, I kept meeting with uh, the Port Authority about the George Washington Bridge because we were letting no one cross the bridge in either direction. Moving traffic out of Manhattan, we actually put up the plan to prevent all cars from entering the borough of Manhattan, which had never been done before. The streets were empty as you drove around in the in interior streets. But as the day progressed, hundreds, thousands of people started walking up to the George Washington Bridge, trying to get to Jersey finding any way they can get out of the city. These were people who had walked up from the Trade Center area trying to cross. And the George Washington Bridge is controlled by, uh, by the Port Authority. They're the ones who say open or close. You know, I was consulting with them. There was only one captain who was in charge of the George Washington Bridge and he didn't want to make a decision. He kept on trying to reach out to the leadership in the Port Authority. Unbeknownst to him, there was no one left. It all been down there. So finally, I, I mean, back and forth, I ended up having to put cops from my command all the way across the George Washington Bridge because there was a fear that there was going to be another attack or someone would try and do something to the bridge. We lined them up across and we walked people out. Thousands upon thousands started walking. Eventually, we were able to get uh, buses and load people onto buses and have buses from the the terminal at the bridge start taking people just across so they could find some way to get home. And that went on for hours. Uh, it, it was crazy. And I'll, I'll never forget sitting down with the Port Authority with their uh, maintenance people. And the fear was another plane coming in and taking out the bridge. And these were the conversations. I mean, you would never think of having a conversation like this, but well, if a plane hits the George Washington Bridge, could the bridge withstand it? And they would know. What if a truck goes on the underpass of the bridge? Could a truck bomb, if it exploded, would it collapse the, uh, the upper level of the bridge? So these were decisions made that day. And, and to this day, it stands that no truck goes underneath in the lower level of the George Washington Bridge based on, you know, conversations we had that day you know so it's just been an everlasting thing and as the days progressed uh, in Manhattan it was just just so weird you know going down there on some days seeing what it was like down there uh, coming back and trying to do regular police work within the borough with so few people in it, it you know 
no one was coming into Manhattan. You had to live in Manhattan to be able to cross one of the bridges to come in. Uh, it, it was crazy. You know, the calls that were coming in, uh, there were so many leads coming in uh, where we'd have to go and respond. Uh, it was really uh, an upsetting time. Uh, time, you know, obviously none of us will ever forget, you know, uh, lost a lot of good friends that day and to this day still losing them uh it's something that's never going to be out of any of our minds who work that day because you know the tragedies of it still continue here in uh 2020. how long was manhattan closed it's around two weeks i believe before we started letting some more normal traffic in i mean we had posts working with the port authority actually at the entrance of the on the cross bronx stopping trucks pulling them over searching trucks going across the the upper level backing up traffic literally on the cross bronx into connecticut uh trucks not allowed who would normally would go down the the lower level being stopped and taken off the route circling around the streets of uh of Washington Heights trying to find a way to get on to the upper level. There was a lot of confusion for cars. I mean, it was almost impossible to move. The Cross Bronx Expressway on a normal day is tough. During that time, it was almost impossible to get, uh, get across that bridge. Did you suffer any ill health effects from the 9-11 toxins yourself? The only thing, I, I had uh, some skin cancers that were removed. Luckily, uh, nothing lasting. Uh, I had some stuff taken off that they said, you know, off my nose uh, that they said was 9-11 related. So obviously, I, you know, I keep going back to the trade center to keep getting uh, tested. Actually, that's the most common cancer caused by the toxins is skin cancer. And people, and people, of course, are routinely diagnosed with right. skin cancer and they don't make the connection that it's actually scientifically linked. Right, that's, it, it, I had had the skin cancer and that's uh, actually one of the lawyers that I happen to know told me, oh, this is all 9-11 related. Uh, it's important that you, you keep up on it and keep going. You know, I was just thinking, wow, it just happens. But they actually convinced me that it was 9-11 related. How has your perspective on life changed because of 9-11, if it has? Listen, you know, things change in a moment. You got to live your life, enjoy life. Uh, in any second, a tragedy could occur. You know, uh, my respect for the men and women of this agency, of the fire department, who ran into that danger, who ran into a building that was getting ready to collapse. You know, as you look at what's going on now in 2020, people forget what these men and women did and are still suffering for, for what they did uh, 19 years ago. Uh, my respect for them couldn't be any stronger. Would you like to add anything, Chief? No, again, I think it's so important that everyone remembers what people did that day. You know, uh, there were heroes all over the place, in uniform, not in uniform. Uh, New Yorkers joined together we got through one of the toughest times in the history of this city because everyone didn't fight with one another. They joined together and they moved forward. And that's, you know, other things happen. There are things going on now. Let's take that memory from back then. And remember, if we join together and we work together, we can get through anything. Actually, that is one of the most distinctive memories I have post 9-11 was the amazing way everyone came together there was no racial divide there was no anything divide there was we are in this together i was blown away by the spirit post 9 11. absolutely we were all new yorkers we were all americans and we were proud of who we were and that's a message i think that really needs to resonate right now amen thank you so much chief thank you shelly